What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today, like the video said, guys, we are going to be doing some cleanup on this 5.3 that we bought to replace the blown up motor that you guys saw in the Suburban. So um, look, we've got a lot of cleaning to do and so here's kind of how I like to tackle this, right? So anytime you take a motor apart, you're gonna have a ton of junk that like falls down in it. Like you could see how crusty this is. A majority of this is gonna be done by hand and a vacuum, okay? So there's some very important things in my opinion that you need to do before you put a motor back together. One of which is cleaning out the bolt holes that bolt the cylinder heads down. They fill up with water a lot of times when you take the head off, the water all rushes down into it. And so if you don't get those clean guys, your torque setting is not gonna be right. The head could potentially uh, move around on you causing obviously lots of issues. So today we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna clean off the top of the pistons, get this carbon off. You can see the junk that's down in the, in the uh, cylinders. We're gonna get all that off. And we're gonna try to kind of clean up all the forward facing stuff. So like, you know, where our front cover mounts. And the majority is gonna be done with, honestly guys, just razor blades, like new razor blades to get the deck cleaned off razor blades that clean the front timing cover off the vacuum and then we'll probably use like a wire like a wire brush like you see right there to clean up some of the other stuff so anyway we're going to get started i'm going to there's going to be a lot of time lapse in this video i got to get i'm going to start by vacuuming out the junk that's already in there now i've look you can't get down into these holes without making something so i've got this kind of contraption that i've duct taped together to get down in those cylinder holes Okay, to get that all cleaned out, if that makes sense. I'm also going to try to suck some of the coolant out of the water jackets. I've got a little bit kind of flowing over here that I want to get rid of. You can see it spilled onto the floor. But between brake clean, razor blades, and the vacuum, that'll be a majority of what we do to get this thing clean. So once we got that kind of preliminary vacuum done, I guess, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cover a couple things, like the area that goes down where you can see the camshaft, if the camshaft were still in it. I'm gonna kind of pack some paper towels in here because what I like to do, guys, is I like to start at the top and work my way down. So the very first surface I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna dryly, or use a, the vacuum at the same time that I'm scraping to get this surface clean right here and so the reason I'm gonna be using the vacuum is I'm gonna be scraping and trying to vacuum up stuff so it's not falling down into the motor. And it, hopefully it makes sense why you would wanna work from the top down, because obviously if you clean down here and then go up here, you're gonna be knocking the dirt back onto what you're doing. So that's the way I like to do it. I know different people do it different ways. Believe me, I would love to take this to the machine shop and just have them put it in their tank and clean it all up and get it back nice and neat. But look guys, this motor's good and um, there's, I don't really think there's any sense in that. I can just do a little work here. So either way, we're gonna get started. Like I said, there's gonna be a lot of time lapse just like you saw in this video, but let's go grab a brand new razor blade. I may use the brush in these areas. Like this is flat back here, but up front on the block, um, it's kind of got some indentions, but we're gonna be also using some brake clean um, as, after we get the preliminary scraping done.
At this point, I probably went over this, I don't know, probably five times. And you're probably gonna ask yourself, like, how many times do I need to go over it? Well, guys, ultimately, the staining on the block, you may not be able to get that off. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Uh, but what you need to make sure of is do we have all of our gasket material off? And all of our gasket is off, it is very smooth, and um, I think this is good. So I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna basically leave this now. And at this point, we're gonna move on. I may move you to the other side because there's better lighting. I, I kind of started on the deck surface up top here just because it kind of runs into this. So I did go across this top. I'm gonna do it again, but I just wanted to tell you guys if you're wondering why that's cleaner. Uh, but we're, we're essentially just working our way down. So I'm gonna try to get the deck surface, then we may move to the front. Um, I'm just gonna show you one side. I'm gonna do the other deck surface off camera. Uh, we're going to try to clean up the pistons a little bit, the cylinders. Um, let's just keep trucking. So I've went over this a couple times, as you guys saw on camera, I also cleaned the top of the pistons just with some brake clean. Um, look guys, you're, you're going to think that you're, oh I'm good, right? But around these cylinders, a lot of times you got a bunch of carbon buildup and gasket buildup, so it, you really, when you think you're done, I go over it probably three or four more times, um, especially in these areas like around the water jacket here and the pistons, so these guys right here, because a lot of times your razor blade moves around. Now you want to try to keep it as flat as possible. We're not trying to gouge here. We're just trying to scrape. And so it's a tedious, long process. And another reason why a lot of times guys here lately, I've not done a in vehicle cam or head swap in a long, long time, because believe me, sitting in my chair here, going over these spots is way easier than leaning over. I feel like you do a better job um, when you're not like leaning over the truck. I don't know if you guys see all that right there. 
but it's very important to go over it multiple times. Um, we want to get it as flat as possible. I did get my heads back. I don't know if you guys saw that when I first started this video, but my heads are sitting over there that I took to my machine shop. They actually did put some new valves in them, just intake valves. He said they were just really worn and uh, of course, trued up the surface. I didn't take anything off of them, just stock LS6 heads that this thing came with. Um, nothing special. I did swap the springs because we are going to do a different cam. Obviously with the DOD delete, in my opinion, it's a good time to put a cam in if you're going to do that. I'm not talking like super lopy cam, but this right here too, guys, is just purely cosmetic that I'm doing on the, on the ends. I'm going to go over this with a wire brush just to make it look a little nicer. You're never gonna see this anyway. This, I mean, it's going in a Suburban. It's not like it's a show car. I don't even know if I'm gonna paint the block. I originally thought I might. All right, so I scraped it another time. I'm going to go over it again with some brake cleaner. And basically just, it's kind of like rinse and repeat. But the next step is we need to clean out these bolt holes uh, I'm really to the point where I can start that because I've got a majority of the big stuff off the gasket, so I'm not going to be, you know, pushing a bunch more in there. I may go over this one more time off camera with a brand new razor blade. That's the other thing, guys. Switch razor blades often. Um, make sure you're using something fresh. And then keep going over it between, between each time with brake clean. And here's why um, it really loosens up like that's there's a spot right here that I keep getting more and more and sometimes you have to change your angle but the brake clean really loosens up that old gasket so if you keep putting it on scraping going over it putting it on scraping you'll eventually loosen that up and um, it'll roll out but before we stop this clip and I do some stuff off the camera, I do want to show you what my next step is, if I can find where I put it. Okay, so I bought this from, I believe, ARP. And what this is, is it's, it's, a, it's a thread chaser. And so that thread chaser is built for a Gen 4 block. I bought this back when I had my ZR1. And so what we're going to do is we run this down, okay? all the way and I'll probably time lapse when I do this because this takes some time this is the most tedious part uh, and then for the top ones guys what I did was I took a stock bolt and whittled a section in it where we can use it as a thread chaser so once you get this this is different on gen 4 blocks too by the way so we'll get this out and we'll take a look at it and then I've got that, of course, that straw I showed you earlier to like suck out the hole. But what I do is see all that junk on there, vacuum this off, maybe spray it off with brake clean, vacuum that out, chase it again. I generally do it three times on each of these holes. The top ones, I generally go only go over once or twice, but uh, that's kind of the method. And look, I tell you what, let's wipe that. Look how much came out. So all that crap bundles up in the bottom of that hole. So you can't, maybe your bolt doesn't go all the way down. Very, very important that you clean out your bolt holes. Here's what I was gonna show you. You can see that I've knocked this down to use as a thread chaser. These aren't quite as imperative. I'm gonna have to get a little creative with the straw. But so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run these down. I'll probably run them down with my smaller impact. Look at the junk that came out of that hole. Um, we obviously can't have that. And so same situation guys, starting at the top and working our way down. And we'll pull this out. We'll spray off the bolt. We'll vacuum out the hole, move to the next one. These aren't as imperative. I mean, they're, look, they're important, but I should have vacuumed that out first, but I'm gonna vacuum that out. 
We're going to do that along these top five. One, what, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. Five of these. I'm probably also going to do the ones up here because there's some junk that probably fell in them as well. Um, and vacuum those out. This is the same size for it also. want to do before I start running um, I did those top bolt holes but I want to I want to kind of scrape this junk down away from the head surface because I don't want to be pushing this up and it coming back to the top if that makes sense so I'm just gonna do this leading edge here all the way down on both sides same situation guys as I'm doing on the head I'm basically scraping but I'm gonna use the vacuum at the same time to kind of suck up you know the junk that we're um, that's fallen off. I'm also going to cover my uh, pickup tube down here to make sure we don't get a bunch of junk in it. At this point, guys, we have got this entire head assembly ready to go back together. Now, I ran those holes twice with the tap, or it's not a tap, it's a thread chaser, but I really highly recommend that, guys. Um, generally, I ran them three times, but I ran it the first time, it got a bunch of junk out. I vacuumed it first, ran it once, got a bunch of junk out. The second time, it didn't bring any junk out. So that, to me, tells me I don't really need to do it a third time. Look, it's not gonna hurt anything if you do it a third time, but uh, it is a time consuming process going over all of these holes. So we've got basically from the valley cover down is all complete. Now I'm gonna knock out the other side off camera. I'm gonna do all the same stuff on the other side. It's gonna probably take me an hour, maybe two to get it done. And then once we get that accomplished, then we're gonna move to the front and obviously the rear. Um, I don't know if we're gonna do the rear right now, but we're definitely gonna move to the front and then get the oil pan gasket, uh, the old material off. Uh, we'll just kind of see where it goes from here, but let me get this other side knocked out and we'll continue. Now we got both sides chased as far as the holes go um, and both sides clean. We're gonna move on to this side. Now, here's the downside. My vacuum just took a dump on me, but that's okay. We can still do some scraping here. And so that's what our next step is, is to get the front cover area all scraped. Get that old gasket and built up dirt and oil off there. Another good area you need to scrape is right here where your cam plate goes. You can see we got a bunch of junk there. Need that off so we get a good seal with the new cam plate. And we are going to be replacing that. Do not reuse that because there is a seal on it. And look, it's very, very easy to put stuff back together and not do the right thing and have zero oil pressure because that thing isn't sealing correctly. So just make sure that you do that area. Same thing with this, you know, you don't want any oil leaks. That's why we're doing the outside. So let's get after it here.
Now that we finished the front, actually didn't take much. I went over the side a little bit with like a steel brush. The last thing I wanna do before we take this thing off and start with the rear cover is I wanna do the where the oil pan sets. So I, there's no good way for me to show you this. All I'm gonna do is run my razor blade down all the way around a couple times and then we should be good. We'll also, uh, you know, obviously we'll do that to the rear cover if we can get to it. If not, we'll do it when we take it off. But that's the next step is let's get that oil pan area clean and then we're gonna have to take it off in order to get the flywheel or the flex plate off and get the rear main off because we are gonna be replacing the rear main while we've got everything apart. Now, one of the last things we need to do on this engine is, in order to finish the cleanup, is we need to get the rear cover off. Well, look guys, no engine stand works really well with getting um, <laughs> rear mains out, you know, or the rear cover off. So what I've got here is my LS lifting device, and I don't even think this company makes them anymore. I'll list one in the description down below, but it may not be the same one. There's some different variants of it now that go a little further and have different hooks on them. But this one's always worked well for me for both installing and removing motors. But we need to get this off here, and so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tighten these up. I'm gonna lift this thing off, and we're gonna spin it around and get that rear main out. Now, obviously, once we get it hung up on that, I've gotta take the bolts out that hold it to the block. Which, I'm gonna have to use a stronger one, I guess. Now that we got that off, you can see we still have, um, I put the flywheel back on so we could lock it up. We got to take that guy off and then we can, these are 15s by the way, if you don't remember. It's going to be fun to try to keep it m not moving around, I guess, but flywheel off here. Now we can take our, thir those look like 13 millimeters. We're gonna go ahead and knock those off. And I think I can go back to my half quarter inch driver. Oh yeah. And we're gonna be reusing this. We'll talk about that in the next video, but I wanna get this off. We're gonna clean the medium surface up. And we're going to talk about, well, we'll just get it off here first. Now you may or may not need a pry bar on this. Sometimes you do. Let's just use a small flat blade and see if that'll get it off of there. Nope. There we go, yeah. Okay, so rear main, guys, I'm always gonna suggest changing this out. See how that guy is there. Um, I'm always gonna suggest changing this out because look, you have to pull the transmission out. It's a pain, it's a common leaky spot on an LS engine. But I need to pry this gasket off. There we go, get it started. Obviously we're gonna trash this one. And look, you see this right here where that gasket let loose? It's important that we get this cleaned up. Now, very similar to what we did um, on the other parts, we're gonna be using some brake clean. We'll get started with that. Kind of, you know, maybe soften up some of this gasket material. Down here in this corner where it meets up to the pan. And once we go over it with that, I'm gonna go ahead and use a flat blade, another razor blade, and we're just gonna go over this like we did before on the other part. Want a good solid surface this to mount our new gasket to. And look, if you want to, you can go around the crank itself, but guys, it's not that imperative. Um, wouldn't hurt anything, I guess. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over this a couple times. 
making sure we get all the old, see all that junk that's coming off? We want all that off there. Doesn't hurt to come across the bottom of the pan where the pan goes. Get that all cleaned off. Look, the more prep time you spend, the better off you are and the least likely you are to have leaks. So we're gonna go over this a couple times and um, I think we'll be finished on the cleanup side. Now don't forget, I've already got this all scraped off, but don't forget this guy, right? So the rear cover, I'm reusing it. Um, so look, we had a leak obviously down here in the corner, which is a very common area for these things to leak. So I'm gonna be cleaning this off and then I'm gonna take a flat blade screwdriver and I'm gonna tap this seal out. We'll get that out of the way. Um, I noticed there's some leaks around it too and we'll be replacing it as well. Well, we are complete. I got this guy, all the gasket scraped off it. You can see I cleaned up, that's the inside. And then I cleaned up the outside a little bit too and then I pushed that gasket out. Guys, you just knock that with a flathead screwdriver out and um, we are finished cleaning this thing up. So I'm gonna call this video uh, finished. We are going to start the reassembly process in the next video, guys. I'm excited to get, I've got some parts uh, starting to come together. You can see the heads over there. Uh, like I said, I have those. I've got some gaskets. I've got some new tools that I'm excited to use. But yeah, look, take your time. Do a good job. Clean these out, especially the bolt holes, guys. Make sure you take some time there. You can also see that, um, look, some stuff, some oil and whatnot. We're going to go over these probably another time as we're going back together. But we got a majority of this completed. I am already sweating. It is hot out here, guys. But if you did enjoy this video of the disassembly, and uh, well, I guess not the disassembly, but the cleanup, go down there and hit that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, go down there, hit that subscribe button. Of course, like always, ring that bell notification. That notifies you every single time we drop a new video. Go check out TWA Motorsports. Get yourself a hat, a shirt, a sticker, and stay tuned. See what we work on next.